friends. Welcome to part two of this four-part series about level design, where I'll help prepare you for creating an environment in VR. If you did the homework from part one, you've determined the world's art style, theme, one to two mechanics, and the main goal or purpose for your game or application. With these four things in mind, what is the player's objective for the first level and beyond? How can you get the player from point A to B? First, are you starting with onboarding or a training level? Since VR is still new and standards haven't been set, onboarding or a training level is important. The player can learn from gameplay too, not just literal directions. So you may disguise your onboarding as gameplay. Make it easy so the player can get used to what to do, understands the controls, and knows what to expect. Also, your directions can be ways to further the storyline theme and be more mixed in and not so formal. Maintain immersion in VR by using the 3D space and do things like put UI on objects in the environment. In Blade and Sorcery, their UI is often within books. And in Vanishing Grace, you can progress through the story by interacting with objects like this handheld communication device. Voiceover from a character in the game is another way to further the storyline or provide a clue for the next action to take. Okay, let's determine how to get your player from point A to B by drawing the flow out as a user journey. We aren't drawing a detailed map yet. This is just a flow chart with text and arrows. Look at this at a high level first before getting granular. Where does your player start? Then what happens? What happens after that? Keep going with this until you've gone through the entire story or gameplay. The actions the player is required to take along with the environment establishes the pacing for moment to moment gameplay. Think about how a great story creates interest by varying emotions and not having intense action from scene to scene, which could tire out your player or frustrate them. I love slow games, but you don't want to bore your player with stagnant emotion or lack of interaction either. You might want to consider using a story arc. This example is a traditional plot diagram called a plot mountain or story arc, where the tip of the mountain denotes the climax of the story. There are a lot of different versions of this online, so I'll let you do a search to find the one you want to use. Even if your game doesn't have a narrative, you can reskin game systems and vary the mechanics to create interest and set pacing that maintains engagement. Maybe you can include foreshadowing by placing objects earlier that will be encountered later or to simply change the mood with lighting or sound. As you work on the flow, also be aware of backtracking. For example, if your game focuses on exploration, it's a lot of fun to be on a scavenger hunt. In this example, the team at Pika agreed that we'd put items one location away, but not two. There were 12 items to be found in four areas, but the first six could be found in the first two areas and the last six in the last two areas. I like getting the user journey written out first so that I don't get caught up in sketching the space. Once I know what the player's goal is, what they need to do, what happens, I finally place their journey onto a drawn map of the level and environment. Additionally, what can you use to get the player to reach the goal that's been set? These can be things like a quest or tasks to complete, NPCs, powers, and gear, certain objects that are interacted with. As the player travels through the space, what do they find and where? Sound or a glowing visual effect to grab the player's attention could be used. As we think of all of this, it might be a good time to start listing the assets that are needed. These are common categories that I like to list early on. Environment, props, character, sound, UI, VFX. 
At this point, we could start sketching the map and begin placing all of this information, but I want to mention an idea suggested for game designers. Credit goes to Scott Rogers' Level Up book, which I used to prepare for this series. In his book, he suggests creating a beat chart. In screenwriting, this is called a beat sheet, which refers to the moments that build upon each other to create the final film. A beat is a moment that moves the story forward, having the viewer wondering what's next. In each scene, there are various individual beats where one emotion shifts to another and overall action shifts in response. Using a beat sheet or beat chart is like writing out your user journey, but including what assets are needed alongside each moment. This is really helpful in seeing any gaps and where to make improvements before putting anything into Unity. Some great examples from filmmaking are on the Save the Cat website, which I'll link in the description, along with a beat chart template that I made for you. The chart is based on the example in Roger's book, but with some edits and additions to relate this to VR. If you're using my Miro board example, the level area here would be a good place to create a more detailed beat chart so you can see what's needed at each level of your game. If you haven't checked out my video explaining this mural board, that might be something to view next. It's a way to get a traditional design document down in a visual way to quickly digest it and share it with others. OMG, we're finally ready to sketch out the map for our game. Take a moment to reflect on the hard work you've accomplished so far. Sketching out the map is the focus of part three of this series. Homework before part three is to complete the user journey and list assets you might need for the environment and any additional items to help the player reach the goal that's been set. As extra credit, you might consider finishing a story arc or beat chart. Let me know how your planning is going in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.